Yo, what up? It's your boy DL Stewart, and today I am doing another Medigore Monday. Last week I talked about 21 different types of wildlife in my fantasy world. Today I'm going to be talking about another 21 different types of wildlife. So, let's get into it. The first one is Adralian. Their aggression level is very low and kind of timid. They are carnivores, and they usually live in like snow type regions. They are a large uh, feline standing about six feet tall almost um, and is covered in a rough scaly hide. They do have thick coarse fur that protrudes uh, from the tip of their tails and around their head like a mane. And the male uh, Dralians have two elongated horns that curve backwards. Basically the name Dralian or Dralion um, comes from a dragon lion hybrid. Um, they are a large lion-like creature with the skelly hide like a dra uh, dragon and then has two horns. So, yeah, they are very intimidating, but they are just big, cuddly fur babies, I guess. Um, they're not very aggressive, unlike you would think of as a regular lion or anything like that. Um, they are carnivores, so they do hunt and kill uh, other animals for food, but they're not aggressive. The next wildlife is a droid. A droid is kind of in the medium um, range on the aggressive scale. They are very protective. They are carnivores and they can live in any kind of environment. They are a large canine, usually stand about three feet tall. They are covered in scales and they are very quick and strong creatures. They can hunt either alone or in packs um, out in the wild. They have a very keen sense of smell, like most uh, canines and such do. Um, so they are used for like guard dogs and war dogs and used in that uh, sense. The next is a duba. A duba is very high on the aggressive scale. They are predators. They are omnivores, so they eat both plants and meat. And they usually typically live in like forest um, type environments. A duba is a ferocious, powerfully built creature with high front shoulders, um, usually over about four feet tall, and a sloping back, somewhat similar to like a hyena in a sense. Genetically, they are more similar to like a bear than a hyena. Um, they are capable of walking just their back legs, but they prefer, for the most part, crawling on all four. Um, they do have thumb type appendages that they can use um, that's on both their front and back feet so they can grab things and such so yeah like I said they resemble a bear more than they do a hyena but they are still classified more of a canine type of creature the next is a food dog um, they are very high on the aggressive level they are predators they are carnivores and they usually live in either the mountains or the deserts a food dog is a canine form of a lion, um, in a sense. They are very large built canines. They have a lion's mane. Um, and food dogs have the ability to control time. They can stop time, you know, pause it, whatever. They could rewind time and kind of re go through the same scenario if they wanted, or they can kind of fast forward through time. Um, so they are, you know, manipulative like that um and they usually travel in packs of like five or more you, you'll never see just like one or two by themselves they usually stay in packs the next wildlife is a griffin a griffin is very high on the aggressive level they are territorial they are carnivores and they typically live in the mountains and desert regions a griffin is a creature with a body of a lion and a head and wings of an eagle as the lion was considered the king of the beast and the eagles was considered the king of the air, the griffin was thought to be an especially powerful and majestic creature. Um, the griffin is generally represented with four legs, wings on its backs, and a beak with eagle-like talons in place of the lion's four legs and feathers with the equine-like ears jutting from its skull. So, yeah, a big cluster of different things. The next creature is a herd beast. Herd beast is very low on the aggressive scale. They are very shy like creatures. They're herbivores and they typically live in swamps, forests, or plains lands. 
a herd beast is one of the largest source of prey for other creatures that are predators. It stands about six feet tall, has a thick leathery type hide. Um, they have two toed like cloven hooves uh, and two rigid horns growing from their forehead. Many farmers use them to pull plows and carriages and stuff. So a herd beast is kind of like cattle in a sense. I'm just larger built and very slow. The next wildlife is a hippocampus or hippocampi for plural. Um, they are very low on the aggressive uh, range. They are very shy. They are both herbivores and planktivores. Um, they live in water. A hippocampus is depicted as being covered in colorful scales and having the upper body of a horse and the lower body of a fish. They are literally a sea horse. The next wildlife is a hippogriff. A hippogriff is very low on the aggressive scale. They are very timid um, like creatures. They are herbivores. They usually live in mountains or plain lands. Um, and a hippogriff is depicted as having the front of an eagle and the hind half of a horse. Um, so it's kind of like the griffin with like a lion and eagle mix, but instead of a lion and eagle, it's more of like an equine, like a horse or something mixed with an eagle. It is extremely fast and is depicted as being able to fly around the world um, in one flight. So they can fly for long distances, um, not really around the world. Um, it's more one of those myth type things, but they can fly long distances without having to stop and rest or anything like that. So you can get farther if you're trying to travel somewhere like through the air while riding on a hippogriff than you would on like a griffin or a pegasus or alicorn or something like that. So, yeah. The next wildlife is a hydra. A hydra is very high on the aggressive level. They are predators and they are carnivores and they typically live in forests or swamp like regions. A hydra is a reptilian uh, creature with a lot of heads. If one head gets cut off, it will grow back to fold, yada yada, you know, um, just adding to the number of heads that it has. The Hydra is kind of believed to have the body of a dragon since it's very reptilian. It's got the four legs, got the long tail. Um, they had numerous serpentine heads like I just mentioned, just no wings. In my story, The Battle for Metagore, um, the Hydra is described as being the dragon of the swamps because it's as large as the dragons um, size-wise. And because, you know, like I said, it's basically a dragon with a lot of heads just no wings. Um, it can spit like a toxic venom um, top acid and stuff like that. So yeah. The next creature is a hydrant beetle. Hydrant beetle is very low on aggressive level. They are passive, they are omnivores, and they usually live in either the plains, swamps, or forests. Hydrant beetle is kind of like what you know it name states. It's a small beetle. Um, it's an insect with two heads. Um, one on the front end, one on the back end. Um, so it doesn't have like a head and tail, it's just two heads. There are always two colors and are always both male and female so they can reproduce themselves. They don't have to have a uh, partner or anything like that. Um, the male head pinchers are smooth and just a single claw on each side while the female's head um, pinchers have multiple spikes on each claw. Um, each beetle, like I said, can reproduce with itself. The next wildlife is an emuji. Um, they are medium on the aggressive scale. They are very timid. They are omnivores, so they eat both plants and meat. Um, they typically live in deserts and mountains, but they can live in about any kind of environment. An emuji, I kind of mentioned a little bit in my last uh, video about the dragon, how all dragons are born as emojis. An emuji. Um, is born in an egg like most reptilians are and they hatch from it and they hatch as an emoji um, and as they grow they just become bare emojis they ascend up to being a dragon once one of the two dragons in the world dies the oldest living emoji becomes a dragon so not every emoji will ever become a dragon because they might die before one of the dragons dies, or you know, there's a long line of older emojis um, before they can become one. But an emoji is a long, um, large, python-like creature. Um, 
that, like I said, typically lives in deserts or caves in the mountains and such. Um, their sightings are associated um, with good luck. And they possess four short legs, but no wings. They uh, look like Chinese dragons, if you know what those look like. Just a long serpentine body, little tiny legs or whatever. Um, they don't breathe fire or anything like that. They can fly, even though they don't have wings, but it's just kind of like hovering up in the air. The next wildlife is a jackalope. A jackalope is very low on the aggression level. They are very timid. They are herbivores. Um, they typically live in plains, forests, and mountain-like uh, regions. A jackalope is just described as a small uh, rabbit or a hare um, that has horns or antlers. That's all they are. The next wildlife is a kelpie. A kelpie is very low on the aggressive level. They are very tame um, and easily tamed creatures. They are herbivores. They typically live in forest plains and swamps um, and anywhere typically around water. A kelpie appears to be an equine or a horse covered in beautiful colored scales like blues or greens, maybe even a little bit of purples, stuff like that. Um, their mane is usually dripping wet, uh, maybe even got some seaweed in it because they typically enjoy um, staying in water for the most time. For the most part, um, they don't live in the water, but that's where they spend a lot of their time. Their scales produce this glue type of oil. Um, if you go to ride or mount a kelpie, you will get stuck to them. And the only way to loosen that is to actually go into the water. Um, which, like I said, kelpies like being in water. But a lot of times they go too far into water or too deep for a normal person or being or whatever to survive or to try to get out quickly. So once that seal kind of loosens and you can, you know, get off of them, you are already been underwater for a while, you're basically drowning and you might, you know, get kicked by the horse or whatever. So it's not a good thing to mount them. Um, you can toss like a blanket or a saddle or something on them and mount it that way. That way it's just a saddle or something that's stuck to them and you're not. Um, but if you just mount it bareback, not a good thing but there are a few races um, of beings that won't get stuck to a kelpie those are criders lamia selkies and sirens because the oil that the kelpies can kind of produce from the scales don't stick to other scales the next wildlife is a cats a cats is kind of medium on the aggressive scale um, they are very territorial they are carnivores they live in like snowy mountain like uh, regions Ketses are feline-like creatures um, that survive in colder climates. Um, they have a thick white mane, almost like wool, like a sheep's wool. Um, their torso and hind end is covered in a thin, striped gray fur. Um, they have elongated ears, allowing them to hear sounds uh, from great distances away, making them excellent hunters. They have the magical ability to turn themselves invisible and kind of camouflage into their surroundings. They move lightly on their feet and are great climbers. So you might, you know, I used to see this meme all the time. It's like, watch out for falling cougars or something. Watch out for cougars falling from trees or something like that. It's like that. They can hunt or they are good hunters. They like climbing in trees and stuff. Um, yeah. The next wildlife is a Kirin. Kirin is low on the aggressive level, very passive. They're herbivores. They typically live in the mountains. Now and then you will find them in plains lands as well, but kind of more rocky, I guess, type of uh, plains land. Kind of still that mountain-like terrain. The Kirin's head um, most notably appears as a dragon's head. Um, and it's more along the lines of an emoji instead of a dragon, but how it's kind of shape that's now um the kind of like i was talking about the chinese dragons how they kind of have a little mustache type hair or whatever here and yeah um their eyes have thick eyelashes their manes around their neck um always flow upward and they have beards and their bodies are shaped as equines they have an elongated neck 
um, and legs, and I always shown one with cloven hoofs. Um, Kyrians have small knob-shaped horns. Kyrians in mythology is actually believed to have been maybe the earlier um, ancestors of giraffes, or might have been giraffes in general, just from the people that have never seen them. Um, they kind of got the equine-like figure, they just got the small horns, they kind of got that scaly type of uh, pattern in their fur, and then the face and such. Kyrians are described as being golden in color, um, or very tan, light tan in a sense, um, but are not limited to just gold and can be any earthy type of tone, like browns and such. And it's said that their voices or their little neighs or cries or whimpers or whatever um, sound like bells, like wind chime type bells. Um, and they are believed to be able to walk on clouds because their bodies are so tall, they got long legs, long necks. Just mythology, folklore, they can walk on clouds. They can't, it's just part of the lore, I guess, behind them. The next wildlife is a kraken. A kraken is very high on the aggressive level. They are predator, they are carnivores, um, they live in water. A kraken is a large cephalopod-like um, creature, um, which a cephalopod is squid, squid-like um, creature. Um, it is more fearsome and ferocious than a leviathan. Um, which will be the next one in this list. So the next wildlife is a leviathan. Um, they are very high on the aggressive level. They are also predators. They are carnivores. They live in water. A leviathan is a large sea creature able to reach the length of about 300 yards uh, long. So that's like three football fields. Um, they are extremely rare. So it's not like you see them all over the place. Um, but they are out there they do exist in the world um they have four webbed like feet um or appendages um and they have 50 rows of teeth inside their mouth the next wildlife is a manticore a manticore is very high on the aggressive level they are also predators they are also carnivores they typically live in mountains a manticore has a long feline like body with two scorpion tails dragon like wings and horns like a bull's horn and metal like claws their wings aren't strong enough for them to be able to fly for long periods of time um, like I mentioned in my races uh, video last month about like incubi and succubi their wings are more for aesthetic purposes or for like sheltering themselves from the Sun or something like that they're not really meant to fly long periods of time. And that's what manticore's wings are for. They can't fly for long periods of time, only enough to maybe pass over a wall or onto a building or, you know, something like that. The next wildlife is a megalodon. A megalodon is very high on the aggressive level. They are predators. Um, they are carnivores and they live in water. A megalodon is a giant shark. They feed upon large animals, small animals, whatever. Um, megalodons can reach the length of about 60 yards, so not as big as a leviathan, but it's still pretty fucking big. Um, and they have about five rows of teeth. The next wildlife is a megalopige. Um, they are medium on the aggressive level, they are timid, they are herbivores, they typically live in swamps, plains, and forests. A megalopige is a small red moth. Um, so it's like an insect, it's not very big. Their bodies glow in the dark, um, so you have this little red light, um, almost like a firefly, but red, and some moth. Um, they tend to live in more moist and humid um, type climates, not really like volcanic wastelands or deserts or anything like that. When I'm talking about humid, but more, you know, the warmer um, swamps, closer to rivers, stuff like that. If they are angered or disturbed, um, they will bite um, in means of like defense um, or sting you in a sense. Um, even though they are small, their bites are very painful and can burn for several hours after the initial bite. Um, and their bites can also cause fevers and swellings. And then the last wildlife that I will be talking about this week is a morguar. A morguar 
um, even though it's spelled like more gar, it's more guar. Oh well, um, they are very low on uh, aggressive level. They are very timid. They are herbivores and planktivores. They also live in water. A morguar is an enormous sea creature. Um, it has two or three large humps on its back. If it's a female, it's got two. If it's a male, it's got three. Um, and a long serpent-like neck. Um, it's kind of dark in color. It's like a grayish blue, but it's kind of dark um, in a sense. Um, and they are about the size of an elephant and has two large fins um, and two small fins. And um, just kind of paint a better picture, the most um, known morguar um, out there would be Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Um, so that's the type of wildlife that, that would actually be classified as. So yeah, that would be 21 more fantasy wildlife from the Dragon to the Morguar for this week's Metagor Monday. Check back in t next week um, for another Metagor Monday, um, which will be the last 20 that I have uh, developed so far for my world. As always, my debut novel, The Battle for Metagor, is currently available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books Depository, and a bunch of other places. All that's linked down below. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube on here, you know, hit subscribe. Um, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest. I have a Patreon if you want to go support me on there. I have a website. I have a newsletter where you can go sign up on my website for it to get a newsletter about once a month about what I'll be doing the next month and any other kind of little info that I think might be cool for y'all to know. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So, see y'all next week. Peace out. Yeah, Lee. Everybody love everybody.